morning. It is week five of my summer prep and I weighed in this morning at 201.7. That's not a bad place to start. Last week, as we know, wasn't the most successful if we're going just based off of the scale. I'm really excited for this week because I think I've identified what the issue is, what's holding me up a little bit. And so I'm going to implement it or, or I don't know the right word. I'm going to implement it this week, test it out, see how it goes this week, probably and next week. And then let you guys know what the change was what the modification was i do unfortunately well not unfortunately it's crazy i have cardio today so i am going to go do intervals kind of like i did last week not sprints intervals much slower once i'm done with the intervals i don't know how long i'm gonna go how long i'm gonna do this for um i may just jog or i may walk on an incline i don't know followed by mobility and then followed by core and yeah goal is 400 calories burnt so Gotta make it happen. I've been doing really well with my sleep. I am normally sleep at the latest 9.30. So I'm getting six, seven, and on some nights, eight hours of sleep. Um, water, I'm still doing a very good job of making sure I get 80 ounces plus a day. Um, steps are still hovering eight to 10. Some days I'm hitting my 10,000 steps. Other days it's more like 8,600. So again, I just need to be more intentional about getting those steps in. I am hitting my protein. It's actually been very, very easy for me to hit protein. Uh, just making sure that everything has protein in it, you know? Like my breakfast is very high protein. Um, I'm eating my salmons and my chicken, uh, eggs, egg whites, turkey bacon. Those are the primary sources right now of what I'm using to get that macro. And uh what else my stress levels are down right now thankfully like i'm trying to let let too much get to me um because that's never helpful right and what other variables i think that's i think that's it um i could get outside a little bit more i think that'll be good for my mental go on walks throughout the day outside so maybe today depending on the weather i will do that i'm injury free thank god i feel good i feel fine i don't have any aches or cracks or bones or, well not cracks i don't have any aches or pains or anything so i'm very thankful there so that's the rundown i'm really excited for week five just because it's another opportunity to go hard uh, summer is closing in on us. I want to say it's maybe like 83 days or something. Let me see. Yeah, it's 83 days until summer. So like we're under the three month mark. Gotta really like keep going strong. Keep doing what we've been doing with slight modifications. Um, but yeah, I'm not hungry right now. So I'm going to go do cardio and then come back and eat. And yeah. Feeling good, feeling great. We up this morning. Oh, well, we down. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to share this with you guys. So I just weighed in 200.9. What? Finally. And I think that my, um, when I told you guys, I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is. I cannot wait to share it, but just bear with me, please. Cause I gotta, I'm doing a test trial here. I gotta let you know. I'm not gonna lie. It showed 199 and then it jumped back up to 200 point nine but you know whatever i feel good i look good i'm good life is good not just because of the scale but like life is good i'm thankful it is indeed another cardio day and so i was torn between walking on the treadmill so i can get steps in and doing the stairmaster because i like the sweat of the stairmaster the first like five to seven minutes on the stairmaster are literally feels like hell to me it's like what what why am i doing this but once i started once i start sweating it's like a release and i feel good and i'm like oh 20 minutes oh 30 minutes and then like especially if i'm reading a book or watching something like time just passes and i'm like oh okay cool we're done so like do i take the easier right route or do i take the harder route right and so like after doing this check-in i'm like yep we're doing the harder one we're gonna stay foot on the next we're gonna we're gonna 
continue to go hard. We're going to continue to make the difficult choices and pick the difficult option because why take it easy right now? I feel fine. I feel good. I got great sleep last night. What's the issue? So my goal is 30 minutes on the stairs and then if I still feel like it afterwards, I will walk on like a slight incline just for the steps and then do some direct core again. I did core yesterday. I'll do some more core today. Yeah, let me do a quick physique. Damn. I'm so proud of the progress. Slow and steady, being consistent, showing up for myself, being disciplined. Either you want it or you don't. Have the best Saturday. I'll see you guys manana. Oh, who me? Oh yeah, I mean, I weighed in at a, at a low this morning, at an all time low this morning, since the beginning of summer prep. I'm so excited. I feel good. I'm looking better. The scale is going down. I'm getting stronger. Like, the summer is mine. I want to continue to say it over and over, like the summer is mine. It belongs to me. I weighed in the look. Don't embarrass me right now. 200.1. Y'all, I'm taking over for the 9.9 and the 2000s. I am almost at 199. And to, in all honesty, like, I feel like this makes me an even better coach. Like, no disrespect to coaches who, like, have always been athletic and, like, in really good shape because that is, I'm not taking anything away from them. They're, as long as they're very knowledgeable, they're, you know, always learning. The same thing I always say about coach. But I feel like when you have a coach with experience that matches your experience, it's, like, um, even better, if that makes sense. Like, for me, I can coach someone into um, gaining weight but I can only empathize or sympathize. I can only like relate to you to a certain extent because my goal, or my my uh, problem has never been putting on weight. If that makes sense, so I can really advocate for the um, the girls who want to drop body fat and want to get you know healthier and more in shape. I can really advocate because I've been in that role. The, uh, for the people who start and stop, the inconsistencies, I've been in that role before, so I get it. And not saying that I couldn't coach someone whose goal is to gain weight or someone whose goal isn't aligned with my goals. I'm just saying that I can be very relatable to the people who have experienced or is currently experiencing what I have. I hope that, I hope that makes sense. Because sometimes it feels good to have a coach who can relate, can be like, you know, can can understand exactly where you're coming from based off experience and not just based off of textbooks or certifications. Um, but yeah, a win is 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 a win. Um, that's enough. Feel good, feel great. So this morning, this is where we're at. Again, my lower uh, stomach core or whatever is where I house like most of my fat here and um, around the bra area so it's gonna be nice to see the fat drop from those areas along this journey I have deadlifts today it's Sunday so deadlifts and I think I'm gonna take you guys with me but I did want to drop some deadlift tips in case you are looking to get stronger in the deadlifts in your deadlift, and this is regardless if you pull sumo or if you pull conventional. Now this is not a how-to deadlift. I need you to already know how to deadlift in order to implement what I'm about to say. Okay, so first and foremost, well not foremost, because there's no order here, but your grip strength. If you want a stronger deadlift, you also need to make sure your grip strength is getting stronger as well. Because like what holds the bar? Like obviously your hand, but your grip plays a major part in it. But here are some ways to get a stronger grip heavy kettlebell carries or like farmer carries dead hangs i'm um, also just like actually doing curls just for the forearm those are three like simple easy ways to get a stronger grip take the slack out of the bar you waste so much energy pulling the bar before the slack even comes out that you could just skip that whole part and go ahead and create tension and pull the slack out and pull straight from there. I encourage people, I encourage my clients to stay overhand as long as possible and then switch to mixed grip once you get to a point where overhand isn't like sufficient anymore. So at 135, if that's nowhere near like your your top, like nowhere near your PR or anything, I don't see a point to already have a mixed grip. I save that for like the heavier lifts. Um let me think of like one more thing for, oh, 
Yeah, like doing rack pulls. So rack pulls would be really good for like the lockout portion of your deadlift, which I actually need to incorporate more rack pulls. Um, but also directly training your back. So doing like uh, Superman, Superman's back extensions, back hyper extensions. Uh, still doing like your, your hip thrusts, your RDLs. That makes for some good hinge work and like helping with lockout. Really the whole deadlift. Because when you think about it, a deadlift is essentially like a hip thrust. It's just in a in a different, um, you're just in a different position for the most part. And obviously like gravity and things like that make a difference, but you're just in a different position. Oh no, bonus tip. So this is so good. And this is like a mind, a mind switch thing. So once you make that change, you're like, ah. As much as a deadlift is considered a hinge or pull exercise, a deadlift is also a push exercise. Hear me out. The very, very beginning of the deadlift, like after you've gotten the slack out of the bar and you're about to start the deadlift, well, you're about to start like deadlifting, um, instead of thinking pull, think push. Because it's kind of like being on the leg press and pushing the plate away from you. It's the exact same thing here. You start off, you don't just start off like pulling. You start off pushing away from the ground, driving your feet through the ground as if you're doing a leg press. And that's one simple thing can literally like help you so much to um, be more powerful and to really like have a stronger deadlift because you're not thinking about pulling the whole time. You think about pushing and then it turns into a pull as you come up. I hope that makes sense. Like it's like a lot of gray area between the pull and push within the deadlift. Oh my goodness, I had one more tip I just thought of. Um, dang, I can't remember. But there are a few, a few different like, there's a few more tips that I've thought of over the few, past few days, but I don't remember what they were. But yeah, for a stronger deadlift, like if you were to incorporate some of those things, I'm sure that it would help. Obviously you wanna go ahead and tuck your pelvis um, and brace your core, like all that stuff should already be a part of what you do when you deadlift to protect your lower back, to build pressure within your belly to help. Dang, I just thought about the other one again and I forgot. Um, oh, banded deadlifts. I don't do these nearly enough, but that can help with explosiveness, um, to be able to provide more force production when you're deadlifting. So you obviously do it at a lower intensity. You wouldn't do it like at your one rep max or anything. So that's today's lessons. I am way over time. Like this is ridiculous. I'm about to go eat. I'm going to eat a banana and some yogurt. And I will probably see you guys at the gym. I don't have a lot of energy this morning, but on a positive note, I weighed in at 200.2 this morning. I think it's up 0.1 from yesterday, so whatever. But I feel good, y'all. Like, I don't feel weighed down. I feel very light this morning. Aesthetically, like, I am feeling more confident. I am loving my body. I'm so thankful. That's pretty much it. Um, of course, I do have cardio today. Actually, I don't know what I'm going to do for cardio. I have about an hour to get it done, though, because I have a session at uh, 6 a.m. April goals. Let's talk about that real quick. My April fitness goals. I don't have a lot on here because, I mean, there's not much that I feel like needs to change. To improve, yes. So, first and foremost, I just want to remain consistent because, obviously, what I'm doing is working for me. Um, I also enjoy it. It's not like it's something that's a hassle or that is uh, taking too much out of me. So I just want to remain consistent. 
I'm already a third of the way through uh, the 12 weeks. So I just got to keep pushing, you know, because I have a tendency to start feeling myself and be like, ooh, ooh, let's order pizza every night or something like that. So, um, yeah, I just got to. Just, I just want to remain consistent doing what I'm doing now. I do want to up my steps. So remember I told you guys I'm normally getting between 8 and 10 steps a day. Most of those are around like the 8 mark, like 8,600. But I want to for sure end the day with 10,000 steps. So that is something that I'll have to work harder at this month in April. I thought there was one other thing. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. So yeah, just being consistent and upping my steps. Um very pleased with how things are looking and moving right now and how i feel so all is well if you have not already i do encourage you to make some april fitness goals decide what you want to achieve this month write it down make it plain and go after it i feel smaller i don't have much energy um i will see you guys tomorrow good morning uh today is tuesday it feels better than yesterday if that makes sense because yesterday was very monday-ish i weighed in still at 200.1 this morning which okay <laughs> like i feel good i look good you know what i'm saying i'm 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 strong yeah i'm still i'm still making progress so like i'm just happy since i am lifting today i have some yogurt and banana for some quick carbs so this week i tweaked my program for the past eight ish weeks i have been training three days a week so lifting three days a week right and i wanted to see what would happen if i added in a fourth day it's been a while since i did four strength training days but um, i want to give it a go now the thing is i'm not completely changing the program i'm tweaking it I would say about 85 to 90 percent of it is still the same but now i am i've restructured it and i added maybe like two or three exercises and i took out like two movements but with that additional volume with that fourth day i'm just kind of interested to see how how it's going to flow and how it's going to go you guys know i've been weighing in every single day but i just want to remind you guys that the scale is not everything it's not the end all be all um, look for other signs of progress as well. That's what I'm doing. I'm making sure to pay attention to how I feel and how clothes fit and how I look and how pictures and videos show up too. So not just the scale, but I am using it to help monitor this um, summer prep series. I'm going to eat, take pre-workout, and then head to go lift. Uh, yeah, I don't have too much to say today. I will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. It's hump day, it's Wednesday, feels like it. First, let's talk about yesterday really quickly. I had one of the best lifts. It was like a 9.5 out of 10. Like, it was so good. It was so, so good. I'm sore this morning, my quads, my chest. I got in my 10,000 steps yesterday and the day before. So I'm doing what I said I'm gonna do, I'm trying to be a woman of my word, pushing myself. I had to make a conscious decision. Jasmine, what do you want? You said this was your goal, make it happen. So that means getting up and walking whenever I need to. Oh, weigh in. I did weigh in at 200 exactly this morning. I think the scale played on me. It just wanna play games. Um, so hopefully tomorrow that means I will break into like 199 point something. Uh, now in regards to cardio today, I don't feel like doing it. I don't. I would much rather get in my bed and go back to sleep or just lay there, honestly, in the dark. But, you know, I'm trying my best not to think about this too much and just get it done. What am I doing for cardio? I don't know. Last night I had a plan. I said, okay, then I'm going to do 40 minutes on the Stairmaster or I'm going to jog one mile and then do a circuit afterwards. I don't know what it's giving. Okay, I have to wait till I get into the gym and then figure it out because I'm uninspired this morning. But the work must get done. All right, I need to stop putting this off and go get this work. Uh, we only have one more day in this week's, um, in week five. So hopefully tomorrow we'll end on a very good note. Have the bestest day. Welcome to the last day of week five of my summer prep. Tomorrow starts week six, which means we're already halfway through the 12 weeks after, uh, or next Friday. And this is why I always say, like, you might as well go ahead and start. You might as well go ahead and do the work because time's gonna pass regardless. I could have chose five weeks ago to just continue on. 
how I was doing or I could have taken the time to really break broken down like areas for me to become stronger in and make those tweaks to my program to my diet to um, sleep to everything else in order I forgot what I was saying actually <laughs> I just blinked um, I'm moving very slow this morning I'm also a little bloated and I don't know why and then my cycle is set to start next Thursday. I don't know if this is like pre-cycle symptoms or what, but I feel very tired, even though I got plenty of sleep. And then like I said, my stomach um, is bloated and it hurts a little bit. Anyway, back to what I was saying before, you might as well just do the work. That was my whole point there. I don't remember, I lost my train of thought, but you might as well do the work. Time's gonna pass regardless. I did weigh in this morning. I'm at one, mm -mm. I'm at 200.3, which I'm a little surprised about, but then given the fact that like, how my stomach feel, I mean, maybe it's that, I don't know. But I won't be discouraged. I did think that I would end the week at like 199 point something, but you know, we push on. I have strength training this morning and i'm mainly hitting my posterior so um like back hamstrings um calves and some bicep work but it's very much like a pull and hinge day do i feel like going today absolutely not am i going to go absolutely am i late absolutely i'm going to get there and i want to give 100 cent of whatever i have today so i'm going to still show up for myself because there's no valid reason for me not to go you know if i was down bad then okay but i'm not i'm just not myself i'm just not myself oh also this week remember my goal starting april 1st was to get 10,000 steps a day for sure because i was hovering between eight and uh 10 most days i did in fact Monday get over 10, Tuesday get over 10, yesterday I did not. I was very close though. I think I was at 8,600 or 9,000. And there was, there really was no excuse. Like I could have, if I was just more active and got up throughout the day, I would have been fine. But today I shall get 10,000 highs and lows from the week. The lowest I probably would have liked to see 199. The high is it was a successful week. Outside of like me bloating and feeling tired today, I feel really good. I feel um, good with the physical progress that I see. I'm injury free. I know I say that a lot, but that's such a blessing. I love not being injured um, or anything that can hold me back from lifting the way I need to. Uh, I'm excited for week six and to see what's to come from the rest of this summer prep. I wish I had a little bit more energy to give you guys this morning, but um, have a great day and yeah, I'll see you next Friday.